Hi everyone! Welcome to another class. I am excited to paint. Um, so for those of you who are new, uh, new to the channel, new to my classes, we do a welcome chat for about half an hour, um, getting supplies ready and everything. Um, so we'll be, um, just chatting for the next, you know, 29 minutes. Um, so if you're here, say hello. Um, if you don't want to join for that and you're watching the replay, you can um, look down in the description box, box below and there will be a um, timestamps and you can kind of skip ahead for um, whatever section that you need to go to. So um, yeah, if you're here live, say hello in the comments. Let me know where you're painting from, if you're painting um, with anybody, um, whether in your house or like maybe, um, I don't know, on Zoom or something. Um, but yeah, let me know. Hi, Micah. Glad to have you here. I'm excited. I got my canvas already, and I'm about to use my traceable to just sketch in, um, sketch in the basic shapes. But let me just let's see who else is here. Okay. Um, not here yet. Okay. Uh, I've been on a little bit of drawing binge. <laughs> That's great. What have you been drawing? Like, what are, what are the subjects that you've been drawing? Oops. Oh, the timer's not working anymore. like to draw manga. Oh, an anime type, so that's fun. I, oh, I always liked anime style. I almost got into it when I was in high school. Um, I bought this, like, anime book on how to draw, like, that style and everything. Um, but, I don't know. I always liked it and admired it. But it never could catch on to my style. <laughs> I don't even know if I have a style, but, you know. Uh, I'm just making a quick post, letting everyone know that we are live and ready to get ready to paint. Come say hi. <laughs> okay. I'm going to use my traceable. And get going here. So again, if you're just joining us, um, say hi in the comments. Uh, do you watch any anime? I've been watching some Naruto. Um, not nowadays. I don't have time, really. I barely watch TV with my husband. Um, I don't watch TV on my own, really, because I have the kids and work and just all sorts of stuff going on. Um, but when I was in high school, I used to know I watched... Naruto, I watched um, Pokemon all the time, um, I watched, what were some of the other things? There was like this angel anime that I watched, I don't remember what it's called, my brother recommended it and I thought it was really good, but I have no, I have no idea what it was called, um, but yeah, so um, yeah, nothing, nothing right now, um, the only thing I watch right now is when my son wants to watch Pokemon. So that's that's about the anime <laughs> that it can get, the most anime that it can get. Let's see. 
Hi, Tanya. Welcome in. Just making a post letting people know that I'm live and we're ready to get going. Um, I'm just going to prepare my traceable on my canvas a little bit. How is everybody? It's been a long week here, I feel like. Um, not just the weekend, but like last week I felt like was really, really long. And um, I don't know. It's just been, it's been one of those weeks. I felt really behind on a lot of work stuff, but that's okay. Um, I've also been really happy because my channel's got 300 subs. Yay! Congrats! It's a feat. Especially if you don't have, like, a following anywhere else and it's like purely just on YouTube that's like that's really great yeah prior to YouTube I had a following on Facebook so I feel like it like skyrocketed from everybody there and then it's kind of just like leveled out and it's like steadily steadily growing it's um, but honestly any growth is any growth is nice um, I just love painting with people and I'm glad that I get to um glad I get to share it with everyone. Um by the way, happy memorial happy memorial day everyone. Yeah, for sure. Um looking forward to your class. Hello, hi Suzanne. Welcome in. Also let me know um if this is like your first time painting with me. Um I love hearing stories of um, how you found me, or if this is your first time. I know everybody has a different story, so it's always fun to, uh, it's always fun to hear. So let me know. If anybody's wondering what I'm doing, I'm just preparing my canvas um, with my traceable. Um, and if you're interested in a traceable, I do have that available for all my patrons. So if you are um, here and would like a traceable, traceable, if you're not comfortable drawing it yourself, um, or you don't feel like drawing it yourself, um, then you can head on over there. It, I give it to all patrons. Um, it doesn't matter the tier. Um, so yeah, that's available to all supporters. But I will be going over like the basic shapes of the butterfly and things like that. So if you are not a patron, you don't have to worry. I, I still will go over um, how to draw it just in case. For those who don't, who don't have a traceable. It is my first class with you. Well, hello and welcome. Is this your first time on the channel or just the first class? Have you, how long have you been painting? That's always fun. How long have I been painting? I've been doing, I've been doing classes. Oh goodness. Probably about I want to say around five and a half to six years. I've been painting longer than that, but um, I think teaching wise, it's probably been about five ish years. Online, though, it's only been since the pandemic, which ironically is very different than painting in person because um, I can't see everybody's work and I can't like see where everybody's at and like paint according to like that I don't know it's very different 
but it's fun. So. Let's see. I started reading some anime. Only watched, but I've been reading it now. Cool. Uh, this is my first class with you. I'm out in Kentucky. Kentucky. What's the weather like in Kentucky? I have no idea. I'm in... It's, like, really warm here. And I feel like it's not supposed to be. But I guess it is... Is it technically summer yet? When does summer start? I don't even know. It's just warm here and I don't like it. <laughs> I like the cool weather. I like scarves and pants and all that. But... Summer is great for butterflies, so there's that. I think I'm pretty much done with the traceable. sunny today out here but the joke is give it five minutes and it'll be different <laughs> it's funny it's 60 to de 65 degrees in New Jersey that sounds lovely <laughs> um Tammy says June 21st I believe did I ask a question about when something was um hello from west west Kutenyas. Never heard of that before. Um, Tiami, what are you, what are you, um, referring to with June 21st? What is June 21st? Hello, Sharon. Uh, it's about 70 degrees Fahrenheit, and I'm near Toronto. See, I feel like 70, what's your perfect degrees, like, for outside weather? I feel like 70, like, 74 or, like, 75 is, like, nice. Once it gets into, like, the 80s, it's, like, I can't wear a scarf anymore, and, like, unless it's windy feel like pants like I need to be wearing shorts when summer started oh okay that's right yes June 21st okay that's right around the corner that's like three weeks I live in San Diego where it feels like it's like always summer with like a little bit of colder weather near December <laughs> and that's like it <laughs> I grew up in the snow so I'm used to like snow and like and then hot weather in the summer but like two opposite ends of the spectrum and San Diego does not have it's like I feel like it's fall ish and summer there's not really a spring and winter <laughs> mid 70s 82 yeah yeah I am all about the cooler weather especially during pregnancy all three of my pregnancies including this one I am the most pregnant in the hottest part of summer so 
Um, I had a August baby, a July baby, and now I'm having a late September baby. <sighs> and it's just, it's great. <laughs> I need to plan better. <laughs> but, you know, it all works out. Um, my first time seeing you paint, I'm excited. Yay, happy to have you here. Uh, what kind of supplies do you need for tonight? So in the description of the, um, of the event or of this YouTube video, you can, um, look at all the supplies that we'll need. Essentially, um, acrylic paint, canvas, and brushes is really, um, what it is. Um, the colors, and actually I can get out the colors right now because I need to get them out too. Um, let's see. Let me just... Oh, I have the wrong... Give me one second. I put the wrong event somewhere on my Patreon for the direct link. And I need to fix it. Um... Can I share this? Here. I have about like five different posts that I need to schedule every time before a class like the night before um, so oh why did that not work no oh, it is the, it is the right one why did it take me to the other one that's weird anyway so sometimes links can get messed up and everything Oh, it's the right one. No, it's not. That's weird. Why does it take me there? Whatever. I'll figure it out later. Um, let's see. First time seeing you. Uh, my art studio is in my basement. <laughs> oh, I always have a heater running down there. My goodness. Ours is in our bedroom. So, at least you have like a, a whole space to yourself. Um... Yeah, let me, let me go over the colors real quick and we can, because I need to get mine out too. Um, let's see. Um, white, black, blue, green, yellow, bright green. And I also, I said yellow again, but just make sure you got your yellow. <laughs> let's see. Hmm. Now the question is, what kind of blue? Because the thing about painting is that you really it doesn't have to be specific. I think I might be use co cobalt. Cobalt is close to what the color is. Um, it's a little bit faded, not as bright. Um, but theoretically, if you had a darker one, you could use thalo blue or something and just lighten it up with. Um, some gray, um, which would kind of tone down the colors. You so you add a little bit of black, a little bit of white, but we'll go over that um, during class. I'm just gonna get out all my colors. Ooh, there's like yellow ochre. I might use that today. Uh, they have different yellows. This is my medium yellow. It's probably what I use most. Um, and I think I didn't put this in there, but I think I'm gonna add some orange to that. Oh, and I didn't even... I think these colors are wrong. Maybe this is for a different class. Because there's also pink that's not on the list. And that's just me being silly. Psh. I'm... Apparently I don't know what I was thinking when I was <laughs> putting the colors on here. Okay, I'm just gonna go based off of what I see. I have blue, white, yellow, orange, pink. Which you, you could, if you had like a red, you could use that too. Um, it's just for the flowers. Or you can make them purple. It doesn't really matter. It's whatever you want. Um, let's see. I have my black. My black, my white. 
essentially primary colors. If you have, if all you have is primary colors, then that's fine. I would recommend having a green though, because there is a lot of green in the background. It's literally well, all it is is green. Um, so I would definitely recommend having a green, um, just so you. It's just a lot less mixing that you have to do, um, and it will just make everything go faster when you have to add more colors. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I can't decide. I think I might use yellow ochre, but I can't decide. Um, I mean, honestly, something about these classes that I love, it's really just use what you have on hand, and if you don't have the exact color, you could either make it or just use what you have. Like, to try to, you know, use the exact colors that I'm using so you can make the exact, um the exact painting that I'm doing and like I don't know I think it puts more stress on the people who are painting than it's worse <laughs> and just it's supposed to be fun and you're just supposed to you know relax and have fun so if you're stressing over you know oh I don't have the exact orange color that she's using like it's going to come out great I promise <laughs> um, for anyone who doesn't know um, I have a artist community on Facebook, um, which is just facebook.com slash groups slash Samantha Anderson artist. Um, and that's where you can post your work. So normally in a, you know, in-person class, you know, I can see everybody's, I take pictures along the way, and then we take a big group picture afterwards. Well, we can't do that because we're all in different places. So, um, I would love to see your guys' work after the class. So, um, if you want, you can join over there. Um, and post. Um, I'll have a like an album that you can add your work to, and that way, um, you know, future people who want to paint the same class, they can um, look back at everybody who painted during the class um, or the class in general, and they can get inspired and paint along. Um, so that's always fun. But I have a bunch of paints out. Um, I would say the essentials that you need are primary colors, black and white. Um, the colors that I'm also adding to that because I have them available is my orange, which you can make from red and yellow, um, brown, which you can make from all three of the primary colors. Um, my I'm using raw umber probably there's just a lot of dark in the background so I'm just gonna use that to help darken it out without taking out the color Cause sometimes when you add black to it it just makes it really dark and kind of takes away some of that color versus brown kind of I don't know it changes the color rather than takes it away um, and then I have pink and green so I have green I'm using green because there's a lot of green in the background so <laughs> now we'll probably make a few different greens and we'll just put them all together but I'm excited. And I did I did make my butterfly just a tad bit bigger than the picture because I I don't know. I want the I want the butterfly to really be um the focal point of the um of the painting. Um and it already is, but I made it just a tad bit bigger. So um also I think the picture that I have is a little bit whiter than my canvas. So it kind of squished some of the, um, um, some of the like leaf details and stuff like that to the edge. So, but yeah, let's see, where's my pencil go? I think my, <laughs> my traceable is still on the back of my canvas. Let's get you off.
Hi, hello everyone who's just joining us. I am simply making sure that I have everything I need, all my paints and brushes. Um, if you're here and joining in, let me know in the comments below and say hi. Draw the butterfly if uh, if I don't use the traceable. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, we I'll be going over just like some of the basic shapes of the butterfly. Um, I'll also be putting the um, I'll also just be like showing um, the traceable just so you can get a better idea of the shapes and everything. Um, yeah, but you don't need the traceable. The traceable is really just for those who want it and don't feel comfortable drawing it their so themselves um so i just make that available for anyone who supports the channel but it's not like you have to have it in order to join us like absolutely not um it's just helpful for some people um yeah i think i think that's it in regards to i think i'm all ready to go um i got my paint got my water the brushes I don't think we're doing any I don't think we're using any of the sponges or anything like that no I decided that we're not gonna do that oh I should put in let's see should put this in And theoretically, if you wanted to do the background first, and then you could just put put on like, you know, you could draw it in white, um, and color it all in white. That's fine. Um, but I will say because the butterfly is the focal point and it is fairly big, um, I'm deciding just to go around it. Um, and the background's pretty blurry anyways, so um, it's okay if things don't like blend perfectly or anything like that so um but we are going to go ahead and get started here real quick um and i'm excited to paint yay okay <laughs> All right, see you on the other side. Hello, hello, and welcome back to another class. I am super excited um, for this class. Welcome in everybody who wasn't here during the chat. It is four o'clock. Actually, it's four oh one. Um, but yeah, welcome in. Make sure you got your paint brushes and your paints and your canvas. Um, we are painting a butterfly today, and I'm excited to go over everything. So in the description, the colors were not necessarily correct. Um, I don't know what I was thinking when I only put those colors. Um, so essentially what you want to have for most of my classes are the primary colors, which is your red, yellow, and blue, and then black and white. Um, sometimes having burnt umber, um, or raw umber in there is really helpful. Um, but for this class, um, 
I have here, um, I have my black, my white, and then what would be primary colors, I have blue, yellow, and then what you would use red for is orange and pink. But if you have orange and pink on hand, then that's great. Um, then I would just grab those. Um, pink is really nice because sometimes with red, you can't always get it that pink color. It tends to be, I don't know, more red. Um, but you can add a, like a tiny bit of purple to it to add more of that pinkish color. Um, and then I may or may not use my yellow ochre. It's just a little bit richer, um, but it just kind of depends. Um, you're free to use whatever yellow color that you want. You don't have to use the same exact colors that I do. Um, and then I have, I do have my raw umber for some of the backgrounds. There's a couple brown pieces in there. Um, and then also sometimes I like to darken the green with brown rather than black because I think it adds a different tone to it. Um, you could also add a touch of purple to green. Um, uh, to tone it down that way and give it a little bit of a different color. Um, I really like the the way that purple cuts the green um, and just gives it a different tone. Um, and then I have green. Um, so I you can make green with your blue and your yellow. That's totally fine. Um, but because there is so much green in the background, I would highly recommend having a green on hand. So if you run out of green, you don't have to remix the green and then tint it the color that you need. Um, it'll be really helpful to have that green. Um, I'm using Hippie Crafter acrylic paint um, this, uh, this time around, um, which I believe I already have their information in the description, but if not I will add that um, as soon as I'm done with class. Um, but they have great paints, so um, if you've never heard of Kip Hippie Crafter, make sure to head on over there. And I also have a link to my Amazon shop, which has all of these supplies um, listed below um, or stuff that I recommend. Um, so if you've not checked that out, make sure you check that out. Uh, as for brushes, today I will be using um, just my my filbert, my large filbert, which if you don't have a filbert, you can use um a just a flat brush it's just for the background um the background is interesting because there's just a lot of blending going on and no harsh lines the reason for this is we want this butterfly to pop with definition and color and if there's lines and like definition lines in the background it won't pop as much so a lot of the background is going to be blurry it's going to be blended um and your eye is just going to make out that the background is um, green foliage, um, even if it doesn't look like that to begin with, okay? Um, so I'm using my filbert. I like how the filbert doesn't really have lines. It doesn't have edges, so there's less lines to cover up. Um, and then these are just the brushes that I'm planning on using. I might use other brushes, but again, if you don't have the same brushes that I do, that's fine. You can use what you have. I have a small, like a medium filbert brush, a medium round brush, a small round brush for like details, and then a liner brush. Um, liner brushes are really good for um, long details and things like that. Um, I may or may not use it, I'm not totally sure, but I wanted to leave it open in case anybody had one and wanted to get it out. I think that's it for now. Um, obviously I have my water my paper towel, my palette. I use a ceramic tile for my um, for my flat palette knife classes as well as my other classes. It's just easier for me. Um, but yeah, let me know if anybody has any questions. Um, I am using an 11 by 14 stretched canvas, so I do have sides, top, and bottom. So if you um, if you do if you are using um, a stretched canvas, just don't forget to paint the sides of it. Um, but yeah, I feel like there is a I feel like this could be more lit. I just know that. Oops gonna fall over. Okay. Paint 
painting is hard. You know why? Because light, paint reflects light, but you want to see what you're doing. So <laughs> that's the thing. Um, okay, so that's that. Um, any announcements that we have is simply that if you would like a traceable, um, this is what the traceable looks like. Um, if you would like a traceable, um, feel free to go over to my Patreon. It's available right now. Um, for any patrons, whatever tier, um, starting at $5, you can, um, essentially it's like a tip, um, for that. Um, if you only want today, if you only want today's, make sure to, um, go in, get the traceable, and then, um, cancel before tomorrow because it will charge on the first. But if you want the traceables for all my other classes, um, then stick around and, you know, have that. Um, I'll be posting the next traceable, which is a bird, um, uh, tomorrow anyway, so you'll have that. Um, as for Patreon classes, this is what we painted as our last class. We did a really fun um, girl with hat in the flower field, a sunflower field. Um, so it kind of it kind of resembled um, what we painted in the live stream, um, which was our um, sunflower so it kind of matched that a little bit but um hello for everyone who's joining in uh, we just went over supplies um so if you haven't gotten that those out make sure to get the, all your supplies out um and i think that's it for supplies and announcements i believe yes i will be going over how to do the trace uh how to do a butterfly um even without the traceable um so let me go over that real fast um, so here is the traceable just cause you can't really see, you can't really see my drawing. Um, it's a little bit light. If you are going to draw on your canvas, you want to make sure, so you can do this in two different ways. You can do the background. Um, and then once that's dry, you can, um, paint this in, in white, let it dry a little bit and then go over it with the colors. The other option that we're doing today, um, is we're pre-drawing it and then kind of going around most of the, um, we're going around the butterfly. Um, so this is what the butterfly looks like. What I would do is try to figure out where you want your butterfly and how big you want it. Um, mine is about, it's a little bit, I would say it's about half as big as the canvas. So if I move it all the way over to the edge, the middle of the canvas is about here. So it goes about the width of half the canvas. It's just in the middle. So maybe figure out how big your canvas is, how big you want it, all of that, if that makes sense. So once you have the size, then you can kind of mark. Um, you can mark where it is. So I'll just do this right on here. And I, I wouldn't suggest drawing it this, I'm gonna draw a little bit darker so you guys can see it. Um, don't draw it this dark. You want it to be light enough that some of the paint goes over it if you need it to. Um, so once you get like, you know, okay, I want it this big, maybe even turn it to the side so you can make things um, even. I would do a about um, a little line down the middle. And then your bigger wings are going to be smaller or bigger than your bottom wings, okay? Um, now with this, if you wanted to do a different butterfly, feel free to do that. If you have like a favorite butterfly and you want to look up a picture, you could always do that. You can do an orange monarch. Um, you could do those really yellow butterflies or the blue ones. Um, it's totally up to you what kind of butterfly you want to do. Um, but for this shape specifically, um, the top section is a triangle with a little bit of curve at the top. And then it comes down on the sides and swoops. Let me put this back up here. So the top wing is a triangle. Okay. And then the bottom, to think of like, think of something just swooping down like this, touching. It touches the two like elbows of the wing and then comes, swoops back up to the middle piece. Okay, and then this one particularly has those little two, um, I don't know what they're called, um, but the little two end pieces out here. Okay, 
Um, for the rest, it really doesn't matter as long as it looks like, you know, there's something that the butterfly is on. Um, this is the general outline of the things in the back, but it does not have to be like this. Um, this was just to give anyone who wanted a traceable a little bit of a, I don't know, guidance. Um, to give me guidance, to give anyone else who needed it. Um, so if you wanted to draw in maybe where the flowers are, just to give an idea. So there's a flower here. There's a flower right by the upper wing, by this corner of the wing. So there's a flower up here. And you'll know just when you get to that point, it's you're going to change the colors. There's like, you know, a little bit of a leaf right there. And then some other leaves. Again, it doesn't have to be specific because a lot of this is going to be blurred out. Okay? Let me know. I'm going to put this back up for a little bit. Let me know if you have any other questions. Um, on specifics. We're going to be putting in all the details. So I would really just focus on the outer lot, the outline of this. Um, and maybe just where the flowers are. That would be my advice if you don't have a traceable. Let me know if anybody has any questions and or you're done with this portion and you know you're ready to move on to the um to the painting portion of it um while you guys are finishing up the drawing portion of it i'm going to go ahead and get my paints out um most of this background is going to be green but i have this really bright green um, so I will need to tone down some of these colors. So I'm going to have this bright green out, but then I'm also going to tone it down with some of these other colors. That was a lot of pink. I don't need that much pink. Uh, the thing I really like about the Hippie, Hippie Crafter acrylic paint is that because it's in the bottles, if I put out too much, I can literally just scoop it and put it back in. Because <laughs> I'm like, oh, that was a lot of pink and I don't need that much pink. So, that's a perk. Because I have these caps. Versus the other ones that I use are, um, they are these, and when you open it up, it's, the hole is still small, so you can't really do that. Um, can you tell me what colors you're putting next to the green? So, yes, um, I put down three piles of green. Um, this one I added a little bit of brown to, this one I added a little bit of black to, um, and I'm just going to mix those together and see what colors come up um, because I know that the colors all in the background, they're all going to be a little bit different um, and I want to have those different um, tones and colors. So, and I'm just mixing this together with my palette knife. So here you'll get to see the difference between adding black versus brown. I don't know 
if you can see the difference on camera. This one's darker, but this one still has like the color, I feel like. So those are just a couple colors. Um, I think I have my other green in here. I do have this other um, green, it's called grass green. Which, it's just a little bit richer, so I'm gonna see, ooh, just like splattered everywhere. It's okay, it's a little bit richer, and I don't know if I'm gonna use it or not. Because usually when I do use it, it's like, it's a little bit translucent. Let's see. Usually they say if they're translucent on them. This one doesn't say it's translucent, but every time I've used it, it's a little bit more translucent. So I don't like using it as much as um, my other colors, but I'm gonna just put some black in it to darken it up. And I will also make it more opaque. So typically whenever you have um, colors that you um, that are translucent, add, um, add black or white to it and it will, it'll make it a little bit more opaque. And I realized that, um, let me fix my palette. It's making the color look a lot brighter than it actually is. Like on there, it looks, the green, the, the pure green looks like super lime green. And it's not really lime green. Um, how do you keep your colors wet? Once on the palette, they dry so quickly. Um, some of it can be moisture in the air. Um, Um, and then, or if you have a fan on, I would turn off a fan. Um, let's see, why is this? Situation. I don't know. I guess that did help a little bit. Let me, let me do that again. That's fine. Um, yeah, or if you have a wet palette, you could also do that. Um, but we're gonna be using like most of this green right now. Um, so hence, I'm only putting the yellow up here because it's in the background, but you'll notice I haven't put the blue out yet um, because I'm not gonna use that until the background is completely done. So notice I haven't put the blue out yet um, and I haven't put out my ochre yet because I one I don't know if I'm going to be using it um, but even the orange um, there's so little orange that um, it, it'll dry faster if you have a good amount um, it'll usually stay wet longer um, so yeah uh, okay I'm going to go ahead and pull this down now hopefully everybody is up to speed and have at least the basic shapes of the butterfly that they want to do um, we are going to start off um, from one corner to the other. I think I might start from the left upper corner just because that's closest to me and then I can kind of see where we're going from there. Okay, so I'm going to grab my biggest brush that I have. Um, and when I say biggest brush, it's just, it's like a three quarters inch filbert. Um, I'm going to start with those darker colors. So I'm going to start with a little bit of black, maybe a touch of green, dip it in a little bit of water. And we're just going to, I'm going to start with the side of the canvas because let's be honest, I always forget the side of the canvas. <laughs> um, so I like to start with that and the top. I'm going to start with those dark colors.
So especially for the background, you want to make sure that um, you're not using too much water because water will make it more translucent and you won't be able to um, get good coverage. You'll have to do a couple coats of it and you don't want that. It's like a Like this box is in the way. Okay, let me move this box. There we go. It's a little bit. So I'm just focusing on my darks right now. Where are my darks? My darks come out right here. And I think I'm going to come down first. A little bit of a green spot right here, like a lighter green spot. So I'm just going to blend that in. Okay, for some reason, my screen is so dark, and I don't know why. I think that's better. That's better. That's more like it. Okay. Um, okay, so we're starting to get into more of the light colors. So I think I'm going to go, I'm going to focus down, I think. Um, I'm going to focus down to the stem. And then I'm going to go back up. So let's see. First, I'm just going to kind of blend this out so it's not a super harsh line to work with when I get back to it. Um, let's see, there's a bunch of light over here. So I'm just going to start adding that lighter color, blending it in, and I'm going to put white on my palette because I didn't put that on there. And there is a little bit of white over here. Almost like there's a um, like a leaf that it's being that's being um, lit up. Right now I'm just focusing on the the darker parts real fast. There's a little bit of dark in here. And then the rest of this, it's got this green. I'm just gonna fill that in. It's a little bit of this white. 
And when you're blending, when you're doing like the edges of whatever leaf it is, just go over it a bunch of times and it will blend it out. And I want to stress that it doesn't have to look exactly like the picture. Like if you choose to put a leaf or a stem somewhere where it's not on the picture, like that's fine. For people who've never done like backgrounds like this, it's going to feel really weird and it's going to feel like, what am I painting? It, this looks like nothing. It looks just like blobs of color. Um, but honestly, if you look at the picture, they kind of are just blobs of color. Um, so that means you're doing it right. <laughs> Just gonna focus on the bottom here real quick. And if you guys have any questions during the class, please don't hesitate to ask me. That's why, that's why we do live classes. So I've just added a little bit of yellow and green together just to get a different um, feel to it. I'm going to add, because the stems have a little bit more yellow on it, and I'm just going to add a little bit of a stem here. And then I'm going to blend it in by just going over it a few times. And then you can just start adding some of the faint details, like there's a little bit of white in here. Which I'm just putting on with a dry brush. And again, these details are really not gonna, they're not gonna matter much once we put in the butterfly because it's all gonna bounce back to the background, okay? 
Um, so now that I have a good portion of that done, um, I'm going to go back up to the um, to the top. I think I want to. back up to the top um, I am gonna finish this part right here real quick though kind of forgot about that part So we have that. So I'm going to go back up to the top and just start adding in um, some more of these background colors. I am going to draw in the rest of this flower because it is so bright. I don't want to cover up, cover it up with green. Um, it's just it would take it would take a couple coats to bring it back to that really bright color. Um, same with the bright. Uh, flowers over here we're not going to go over with that green over it with green and then um, like white and then our colors we're just going to put that right on there so I switch back to my bigger brush make sure I got all the green over here Alright, so there is a section of black that's right next to, um, that's right next to this flower. And this is black. And then over here. Just kind of keep that in mind. And all this darkness really does bring out the beautiful colors of the greenery. Um, so don't be afraid to really get those darks. Um, a lot of times that people will look at a painting and be like, oh, there's just something off. Um, it's typically because the contrast isn't there. So your darks aren't dark enough or your lights aren't light enough. Um, so I could even go back in here and really darken up with black this part right here because it is that dark see how that kind of brings it out a little bit and even right here I could do that 
here a little bit too. All right, so let's see. I'm gonna switch over to my smaller brush so I can get into some of these smaller areas. And I want you to think of this painting in three focuses. Like there's the background that's like really out of focus. There's this front flowers um, and I kind of put the, the leaves and flowers on the right kind of in that category, the back. And then there's one that's like one section closer, which is the flower and leaves that the butterfly is on. So it's like out of focus, but there's a little bit more detail. And then there's the butterfly. So if you wanted to, you could make the, um, this section, the middle section um, with the butterfly and that. Um, you could give it more detail if you wanted to, but if you really want the butterfly to pop, um, you'll kind of, you'll still have it be just a little bit blurry. Sorry, there's been like sirens and I think they're like the police are chasing somebody outside. So there's like this helicopter that's like circling right now. I don't know if you can hear that. It's very loud. No, it just closes. <laughs> now car alarms are going off. Can you guys hear that? Um, Nicole, hi, is this recorded? I didn't get in get the acrylic and time for tonight yes it is recorded all of my live classes are recorded and saved um on my youtube channel so this will be available for whenever whenever you need to um wait to paint for it so yeah i apologize for outside <laughs> we live um we live in an apartment complex and my um my setup is like right next to the window and because we have like an air conditioning in it like like half the windows like open all the time technically with like foam and stuff so i can't get rid of it so i apologize um okay mm, let's see we'll just keep moving along Some of these darker colors up here. Almost a little bit of like a white spotch. You can blend that in.
so I think the key, um, I apologize for the, the whatchamacallit, the little light. Um, so the key to having things really blended is I put both dark spots here and then I got my green and put it right here and then I only blended like where they touch. So then you have these two colors um, and you have these two colors that are next to each other but they don't have like definitive lines to them. So I apologize for the I can never get this corner to not have a unless it's like forward but then it's like it could fall for it could fall on me. <laughs> we don't want that. We all just hold it. For a little bit until we're done with that corner. So I'm just gonna kind of go around um, this flower that I see here. I do think I might lighten up this section just a little bit. Just ever so much. Just by, I'm just lightly feathering in some color. say feather in um, I'm putting it on there but I'm like I'm flicking my brush so that it like the edges like feather out and it doesn't leave harsh um, lines it's almost like dry blending a little bit I do want, I definitely want the one over here to be a lot brighter, so I'm going to brighten that up. Grab some of my white. my camera's having a hard time focusing because it's uh 
It's a painting that's out of focus. <laughs> At least the part that is right now. Um, I'm going to take my small brush and just go in here to some of these um, pieces that are poking through. And just make sure that I'm not like forgetting anything that's back here. I guess there's like green all the way over here. So now that we're getting around, at least I am, I'm getting around the point where um, the flower is. So let me show you real quick how to do the flower. I'm going to make sure that there's there's black on either side because that's kind of well there's black on either side so I'm just kind of making sure that the colors all around it are what I want first So now that I have this area the way I want it, the exception of this part right here. Um, a lot of making things blurry um, for blurry backgrounds is doing things with your brush that you don't normally do. So I do a lot of wiggling. I do a lot of going like against the bristle, like against the brush. So instead of painting down, you would paint up. Um, like, and so the bristles kind of like separate a little bit and make everything blurry essentially is what you're going for. Um, so that's kind of some of the 
secrets or whatever. So I want to go ahead and get some white, a little bit of pink. Now I have green water right now, so it might make this a little bit more difficult. I might have to go get some clean water. I have my white, a little bit of pink. And this pink is like really, really white. It's really... So I'm going to fill in this area. I'm going to get some of this white. And I'm going to put in essentially where I want this color. And I'm going to take another brush and I'm just going to rough up the edges. It's a little bit of water. I'm just going to add that color. I'm going to take some of the sides and you're just going to blend them. I'm just going to add some more of this color. I'm kind of rinsing off and rubbing off my brush every now and then. I'm going to mix it within it. And another thing you can do is take some of this and I'm going to use my filbert brush because it's already round. And put little like fuzzy round pieces to it. Like the petals. hard to see. And then of course you can add just that little bit of yellow to the center.
I am not going to use my fuzzy toothbrush. I do not have a fuzzy toothbrush. <laughs> fuzzy, it, it doesn't know what it, it's saying, does it? Fuzzy toothbrush. It was like saying fuzzy cheese. My goodness. <laughs> Sometimes having captions is great. And other times it does not read what I'm saying at all. So I apologize for that. <laughs> um, okay, I'm going to continue moving down. Um, yes. <laughs> That's funny. Still making my way downtown. Just kidding. Making my way down. Sorry if I just got that song stuck in anybody's head. <laughs> On my way downtown, walking fast, faces passing in the background. Alright. I will spare everybody my singing. So there's like a, there's like a, I don't know, a, whatchamacallit here, what's a whatchamacallit, a leaf, there's a leaf here, somewhere, and there's like another leaf here, some flowers over here, and then like a big leaf that goes down here, sorry I moved my hand, um, I'm just kind of trying to block in. Um, cause I am running out of green, so I will need to kind of remix some of these. Which is totally fine. We got some brighter colors in here. Which I'm just putting right over that, um, those darker colors. Blending them in, making sure that there's no harsh lines. spot here. I need more black. I'm gonna go ahead and remix some of this green right now because I didn't make enough. I'll just use this green. This was the green and the black. I 
I'm just mixing it straight with my my brush because I'm going to put it straight on the canvas so it doesn't really matter. There is like a black dark spot right here though. So I'm going to put that in. And of course the bottom. And again, I'm just adding the colors that I see in the painting. That doesn't have to be exact. So this is mostly green up here in between two these two wings. Again, I'm hesitating to use a lot of water with the background because my green tends to be a little bit translucent. So if I need, you know, paint to get into somewhere I'll just dab it a couple times or wiggle or anything like that to really get that paint in all of the crevices rather than using water because again I don't want it to be I don't want it to be super um, translucent And that also helps it be fuzzy of doing the wiggle back and forth. cheese. Yeah. 
technology, am I right? St. Mary? Where did that come from? <laughs> oh gosh. I don't know. Does anybody, does anybody actually read the subtitles and not listen to me? Because um, if it's distracting and it's not helpful to anyone, I'll just turn them off. <laughs> I am down for whatever. I just know some some people um, would rather listen or would rather read than listen, so. Okay, so now that we have, uh, we have the majority of the background. Um, so now I'm going to go over and do um, these leaves, these fuzzy, they're like, they're not totally in the background. Um, they're a little bit, like you can see a little bit more of the detail, they're a little bit closer, but still fuzzy. So let's go ahead and do those. I'm going to start with the ones, I'm going to start with this bottom one. And it has a little bit of a, um, it has a little bit of a shadow, so it's kind of darker right here, and then it goes lighter. Just playing around with the colors, trying to lighten them up where I feel like they should be lightened. Um, and play around with the colors. You can lighten them up with, um, you can lighten them up with white or yellow. Um, either of those would be fine. Um, kind of done like a bit of both here and there. I'm just going to blur this line just a little bit so that it's not completely straight. Just, that's just me taking a brush um, with the tiniest bit of water on it and um, just kind of blurring what I like moving my brush back and forth um, on that line that I had just created. Just so it's not super straight.
And any details that I'm, I'm putting on here, I am going to try to blend out just ever so slightly. And then for this, I'm adding a little bit of a highlight near the edge. And then I'm going back in and adding a little bit of a low light or a shadow. Right near it. Okay, so now I'm going to move on to the leaf that's right here, because this one is over top of both of these. Um, so I want to do that one last, and then we can add in our, um, our pink um, little, I don't know if they're buds or part of just small flowers. Um, so I'm going to go over here. Add some of this. Uh, what shade of green is that? Um, I'm using the bright green that I have with a tint of um, the darker green. And I added just like the slightest bit of white to it. I think I might add a little bit of yellow to it too, just to brighten it up. I'm just using a slightly different color than what's in the background because I do want it to stand out just the slightest bit more. Um, but not too much because we do still have the dark parts of this. Um, all of my green is made, um, with the exception of the stuff that I used very early on, all of the green that I'm making right now is from this bright green. Um, which, it's more of a, a neon green versus the lime green that you're seeing in real life. I don't know why my this camera is like off on the color a little bit. Um, but I'm using this lime green, or the, the bright green. And then just adding either black, brown, yellow, or white to it to shift the shade of it. Um, but it's all made with the same green. Which is why I, in the beginning, I was definitely suggesting having a green on hand. Um, because we have so many shades, you don't have to figure out your blues and yellows in it. You can just add, add your different colors to tint it rather than like creating a whole new color and then adding it to that.
And just like before, I'm just adding in those gentle highlights where the leaf, like the texture of the leaf. And then I'll go back in and just add the tiniest bit of dark near it. So it's still fuzzy, but it does have a little bit more detail. And I'm just going to go ahead and paint the side right here. I'm just going through and just adding a little bit of highlight where I feel like I need to on some of these background. I have barely any paint on my brush and I'm just adding a little bit of dimension to the background. Just with little bits here and there. And I'm just using a dry brush, just dry brushing. Okay, so now that this is a little bit um, drier, I'm gonna go back in with these colors over it. put a leaf and depending on your size canvas and uh, the composition you might have more of these leaves like more like uh, like more of the individual leaves it might be bigger or whatever um, like it might go further over or whatever that looks like
then for the flower, I'm just going to grab my small brush. My small round brush, I mean. Um, or medium brush, I think is what I called it earlier. And I'm going to make a pink with white and pink. So it's a little bit of a lighter pink. And I'm just going to put in some of these... So little circles and then they have a couple lines on them. Go directly into my pink. just a touch of white to them because they are pretty bright maybe to like the tops of it but again don't add too much detail because they are still blurry And the last thing we're going to do is we're going to add our little orange and yellow um, ones above and the rest of the leaves. So this is pretty self-explanatory. It's, it's what we've been doing over here. So I'm just going to quickly, um, I'm just going to quickly do that because I do want to have enough time for the actual um, butterfly. And we are running a little bit tight on time. You're just going to make the insides of these little flower parts um, darker, and that's pretty much it.
All right, I'll probably come back to that in a little bit once it's dried to add a little bit more yellow. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and finish up this green. There's a lot of green in here. So when you're doing these, you want to paint from back to front. So I'm painting this big one back here first, and I'm using a big brush so that it goes faster. Um, if you want to use a smaller brush, you can, but for time's sake. And this one has a little bit more detail, so you can see a little bit more of the. Um, you can see a little bit more of the detail on the edges. Once this dries a little bit more, I can come back and add a little bit more of that detail. But for right now, I'm just I'm just wanting to get the basic colors down. I'm kind of switching back and forth between my big brush and my medium filbert brush.
So I have a couple of these. I'm gonna go ahead and fill in um, the rest of these, which is really just the same process, same colors. Um, except these are a little bit um, faded into the background a little bit more. There's not as much detail. I'm kind of thinking of these leaves in like three tones. You have like the mid-tone green, the darks of the black, and then the lights of the white, all mixed with your green. So that's kind of what I'm picturing when I add my details or highlights and lowlights to this. Um, I have my green, my darks, kind of like my, my blacks-ish. Um, or my really dark green, and then yeah, and then my my green mixed with white. go put in the stem. Um, I think that's the last thing I have to do. So let me know if you're with me still. Um, or where you're at. Let me know where you're at. I'm going to put in the stem which is a little bit, um, it's a lot greener. I feel like it's a lot like more of a light green. Ready for what?
Let me know if you're ready for the butterfly or not. I guess that would be more of a direct question. butterfly okay let me just finish up doing these because we do have some orange flowers right here that I'm just going to put in briefly and I'll make them more apparent once we once this dries okay I think that's the end of that okay so let's go ahead and start with the butterfly. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put in a coat of light yellow. So grab your yellow and your white. Mix that together. It's going to be mostly your white because it's pretty light. And then you're going to add just the slightest touch of orange or the even slightest dish touch of red if that's what you're using and you're pretty much just going to coat the whole piece i think i could use even more white And if you pre-drew this, you should still be able to see all your lines through it. This is still wet we're gonna add a little bit of white to right under where the wings are or like the the second like the under the under wings the small wings and then just blend that in so there's just a slight Different. Okay, so now that we're into this part, I'm going to go ahead and turn down my camera so that we can see, let's see, um, turn down the contrast a little bit. So you should be able to see that a little bit better now. Okay, so there's a slight um, light coloration. And then there's a couple light colorations coming from the, the bottom. So you can just 
throw in a couple of those. go ahead and work on this other orange um, flower that's behind because I want this flower to be done before I put in the head of the butterfly okay so now what we're gonna do I'm gonna Rinse this out. Is we're going to get the blue and essentially do the same thing. So get out whatever color blue you're using. Mix it, whatever, whatever you need to do. I think I, even with it being a lighter blue, I still need to mix it a little bit with water. I mean, sorry, my, my white. See how this looks. I don't have to go all the way to the edge because that is going to be black. Just focus on that middle, that middle part. So there's the blue. And with our black, um, we are just going to go ahead and line where we want this. So I'm going to take my filbert brush. Um, oh, actually, I'm going to put in the orange right now of that back. So make sure that this flower is done before we put any black on there. 
And while we're at it, I'm going to add some yellow up here. Alright, so we're going to take our black and we're going to line essentially everywhere where we see black. So you can do this in big strokes, in long strokes. I'm just gently going over where I see it. Also, going to be doing some dabbing on the middle piece here. To draw in the lines instead of just lining it. I'm just using this all to dab over all of the um, bumps because there's a bunch of little dots so I'm just using a brush Once I put in all of the rest of the lines, I'll be doing that um, with the other one too. This is where you can use your liner brush if you would like to. To make all of those lines. And we'll add texture onto them later.
The nice part about butterfly wings is that even though a lot of them have similar designs, they're not exactly the same. So even within two butterfly wings on the same butterfly, they're not all exactly the same. It's kind of just how nature works. Go ahead and put in this one. do the little head. And you can do this in any order that you want. You don't have to follow the order that I'm doing. And then for the antennas, it's really just a very thin line that kind of just pops out from the side. And they're just the slightest bit thicker at the end of it. I'm going to go ahead and line the top of this because I know that will bring it all together.
All right, so you'll notice that on the top wing, it has these two, um, these two black marks, and then the other black marks, um, they differ from wing to wing. So this one almost has two of them, and the one over here has two, but the outer one, it's a little bit more faded, and it doesn't quite um, look um, like a whole one. So again, it, it's okay if, you know, they don't look exactly the same. Some kind of fades in well, just a little bit. I'm just going to go ahead and draw my lines. So I'm just going to go ahead and add my black to most of this outer edge. And I'm just doing little tiny scallops, um, meeting those lines that I've already drawn. Um, just ever so slightly. Hopefully you guys are still with me. I know that it's going over a little bit. So once we get this black in, we'll be able to add some of those um, dotted details, which I will show you again how I did, how I did that.
If anybody has any questions about what I'm doing, just let me know. And I can I can help. Okay, so that's pretty much, I think I'm pretty much done with the black. Um, I'm going to take my, um, this is just an old brush that I have. So I'm going to grab some of this black and dab on it. And you'll see that it's kind of broken up and that's going to give me all of these um dots and you'll just make them more concentrated near the bottom like so. I'm just going to give a little bit more speckles to up here. Alright, the last couple details, I'm going to go over it real quick and then we'll be done. Last couple details are adding your white and your little orange specks. So we're going to add white to all of it, including the orange specks, um, because we'll need that to be nice and bright so that when we put our orange on it, it's going to show up. So I'm going to do those first so it can dry. And now I get to go in um, and put in all of these little dots. Sometimes there's a couple dots on the edge. Um, these ones kind of go at an angle or like a little hoop.
putting in all of those little highlights really do make the difference. Bring it to life. I'm just adding a little bit of highlight to right where the blue starts just so it's a little bit brighter. And now I get to put the orange in. So now, for the very, very last touch, we're going to put this... Actually, I think it's more of like a yellow orange. Let me just mix this together real fast. It's a little bit brighter than just the pure orange that I was using. Got our two yellow spots, and there's a little spot down here that's orange. But yeah, there you go. There you have it. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, if you aren't a part of our artist community on Facebook, make sure to go and join that. You can post your work um, and everything that's entailed with that. I would love, love, love to see it, um, to see how it came out and how you did. If you have any um, suggestions on what we would like to paint next um, just let me know in the comments below um, but yeah on Facebook on my Facebook page I also that's where I put out my new events um, so if you want to keep up to date on that make sure to like and follow um, my page on Facebook um, and then if you want to join our patreon community um, that's just Patreon slash Samantha Anderson Artist. You'll get uh, lots of free um, materials and rewards, and I have extra classes on there exclusive to Patreon. So if you like my classes um, and things that I like to paint as well, um, feel free to join. Um, if you are going to join um, and you haven't joined already for the Traceable for this class, wait until the first just so that you're not double charged because um, they get charged when you um, join and then charged again at the um, first of every month. Uh, but yeah, I put out at least two classes um, every month that are exclusive to Patreon, so that's a lot of fun. And then, yeah, if you want to tip, you can. You can do that over, uh, over there. Um, but thank you all for joining me. I had a lot of fun. I'm going to go ahead and sign it because we can't forget to sign our artwork. And I'm going to do it in the corner. Let's see. I'll just do it in the left corner. But there you go. I hope you've enjoyed this class. I hope you'll, uh, we'll see you for the next one. And, um, when can we see you live teach hubby how to paint something? <laughs> You'll have to ask him that. Um, he's ironically he's a patron of mine. He's one of the high the highest tier, which is for the highest tier you get um, you get everything below, but then you also get a private Zoom class with me um, with all my other Cobalt patrons, um, which currently there's only two, um, not including him. Um, so and he's never joined for one, so. 
um, maybe we'll have to <laughs> we'll have to have that as a a extracurricular um, video, but that would be fun. I don't know. You'll have to ask. You'll have to convince him. <laughs> but yeah. Anyways, thank you so much for joining me. Um, I hope you all enjoyed it. Um, I know I did. I love painting, so I love that I get to do this for you all. Um, and thanks for joining me. So we'll we'll see you again real soon. Bye, everyone.